I want to show you how to diagnose for mechanical faults in the patient. First of all, we have a strong, accurate muscle test. The first thing I test on a patient is whether or not they're neuro neurologically organized. There's lots of different forms of neurological disorganization, but the two I use to test a patient with are to place a device one device on the conception vessel and one above it or below it, it doesn't matter. And if the person is, has normal organization, they should be completely weak. If you take a disc away, they're strong. If you put it back on the conception vessel, so there are two discs on the conception vessel, if they're normal, they will go weak. That's one type of disorganization we test for. And I go into detail on that particular form of disorganization in my book. This form of disorganization is more related to polarity and what is known as K27 switching. Now, if she is normal, and I haven't tested her, so I don't know, she will go weak. Resist? Yes, so she is normal. And therefore, I would consider that she had no polarity imbalance and no K27 switching. That's the first thing I have to do in every patient to make sure they're neurologically organized. If they're organized, then I can proceed with uh, a cranial scan. Every cranial bone functions. They interconnect with one another, and they're very much involved and how our whole body works. So it's very important that you have normal function of all cranial bones. And I test five cranial bones using the devices. The first one I'm gonna test is the frontal bone. If you could hold that right there, please. And I will just test to see if she's strong, and she is. And we can move to the left frontal bone. Resist. And now we can move to the sphenoid bone. So we just hit the wing of the sphenoid. Resist as I push. And she's strong. We can do the temporal bone, resist, and we can move up to the parietal bone here, and resist, and she seems to be strong in all of those, and now we'll test the occipital bone right here behind her ear, right there, and resist, and no, she's very weak with this one, resist, extremely weak. So the correction is simply to take the disc that is over the conception vessel, hold it on the top of her head for about one second, put it back, and there's correction. Now, if you want to test the cervical spine, you start at C1, C2 with a disc, resist, and she's strong. Come down to C3, 4, and resist, and she's strong. And you can do that for the entire spine. As long as there is a disc, an entangled disc, over the conception vessel, you can use this disc as a scanning disc. And I typically scan the pelvic bones first, so I can go on to the ASIS and test the right side, and it is normal. And on the left ASIS, and she's normal. If I think that there could be a TMJ problem, I can just simply go up to the temporal mandibular joint, hold it over the temporal mandibular joint, and resist. And she's very weak in the temper on the, uh, when I go over the temporal mandibular joint. That means that the nerve receptors in her TMJ are not communicating really well with her central nervous system. So I will take this disc that was on the conception vessel, hold it on the top of her head, and that reset her central nervous system to the actual ligaments within her temporal mandibular joint. If you think that there could be a peripheral joint problem, you can test for a medial tibial problem by doing it this way, and a lateral by going to the outside. You can test for ankle joint problems. In the same way, you can test for metatarsal joint problems, etc. And you can do that for all the joints of the spine. If you're concerned there might be a fifth lumbar problem on this side, I simply reach across, put it onto the right L5 S1 facet, and resist. Um, and interestingly, she is very weak. So she needs that one treated, so we can reset the nervous system to that joint and resist, and now she's better. Now I've shown you a very quick description of how it works, but uh, in actual fact, with all of these weakness uh, problems, 
there are usually associated muscle weaknesses, especially with the pelvis and the lower back. You can test those muscles before and find that they are weak in association with the lock joint. You can test the neck muscles and see that they are weak in association with the cranial bone faults. And as soon as the cranial bones are corrected, the muscles are corrected as well.